Good morning, folks. We've got some space weather learning today. We've also got two on the solar forcing of terrestrial climate over both short and longer time scales. But we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and after the CME we had off the north yesterday, we find not a lot of activity on the Earth-facing half. Both Enlil spirals are updated, both suggest sluggish speed and a sparse plasma cloud. They don't foresee impact until Wednesday, and I doubt it will even register in the solar wind. But folks, just for a moment, let's focus on these curved black and white hashed lines connecting everything back to the sun. These are the interplanetary magnetic fields and they thread the solar wind midplane, the heliospheric current sheet carrying the solar wind magnetic reversal. These are ubiquitous features of such magnetic systems, all the way to the galaxy where the interstellar or galactic magnetic field threads the rippling midplane. This morning, that interplanetary magnetic field of the solar system is responsible for bombarding the Earth with high-energy protons. These are taken in at the polar cusp, and they excite the auroral zones. Luckily, this is a minor event, not even at particle storm level 1, but we haven't had much proton flux activity, and so let's take a little look, starting with SOHO. Nice big eruption here. Clearly not heading at the Earth, but down and away. It came off the far side of the Sun but it hit Earth's magnetic connection to the Sun. Those curving interplanetary magnetic fields can be juiced up when hit by a solar flare and pound planets with protons on the other side of the solar system. Again, this event was super small, but this is one of the major risks during bigger events, and the Sun doesn't even have to fire the CME at Earth. Speaking of which, Corona Hole loosing an elevated stream which will enhance the solar wind here in the middle part of this week. Let's go over to the James Webb Space Telescope, where many of you have probably seen their calibration image, which by the way means they now have many, many more shots they're not showing us. And I have to say, it is pretty solid in terms of catching diffuse background light, so much so that brighter sources appear a bit goofy. No, that's not what these actually look like. But these three, well, maybe. Central Distant Galaxy, a double nova-looking shell scenario on the right, one inside the other, and on the left is a much, much more distant galaxy, and the two lobes you see are the jets coming north and south, surrounded by a plasma halo. Some solar forcing here, confirmation of the solar control over the 200 and 500 year monsoon cycles. This was something already well described in the literature, and so is the indirect effect of the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is also controlled by the sun. Over shorter timescales, we add to the dozens of rapid forcing mechanisms with another on the IMFBY, interplanetary magnetic field of the solar wind again. This one showing not only the aurora and particle density modulation of the solar wind magnetic reversal, but the hemispheric asymmetry that has long hid these correlations from being more noticed. By the way, remember to be considering every IMF space weather forcing scenario on Earth scaled up to the galactic level and their effects on the sun and the solar system. We call that modern catastrophism. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out the links below the video for much more information on solar forcing of climate and catastrophe. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.